on Afternoon World, it's uh, 3rd of May 2024, it's about 2pm in the afternoon UK time. On Wednesday the 8th of May, have I got that right, is that Wednesday? Yeah, on Wednesday the 8th of May, at early in the morning, at about 4.23am UK time, so it's 11.23pm on the 7th in New York, and it's about oh, it's about one p one twenty three p m in Australia on the eighth. It's the annual new moon in Taurus. This will take place at eighteen degrees. What's unusual about this new moon is that it is. I'm almost scared to say this. Remarkably positive. This new moon is loosely conjunct Uranus in Taurus, but loose, like four and a half degrees away, five degrees away. So it's not going to have that much effect. Apart from that, this new moon doesn't touch the node. It doesn't touch Chiron, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, apart from a very weak conjunction, Neptune or Pluto. Notice the one that's absent. This new moon on the 8th of March is less than half a degree away from being exactly sextile to Saturn. I have to see this as a positive thing. The sun and moon together in the sky will be sextile Saturn. So what this tells me is that people born around the 8th of May, the 8th of March, the 8th of January, and even the 8th, 9th of July. This is a time of opportunity. There's a sextile from the sun and the moon to Saturn. And um, I have to see this as a window of opportunity for a chance for it to bring a lot more discipline, structure, order, shape and form into what you're already doing. It is a great opportunity for consolidating and establishing what's already existent in your lives. And this isn't just those birthdays, this is everyone. If this new moon affects you at uh, and it's taking place at 18 degrees of Taurus and Saturn is at 17 degrees of Pisces, so if these degrees are affecting your chart, then this new moon is an excellent time to, to firm up what you're already doing, to give what you've got going on some some solidity, some structure, some discipline, some boundary, and to move forward with it. So on the surface, this new moon doesn't do anything apart from sextiling Saturn. Great, I hear you say. Yeah, and, and from my perspective, great. It's a nice new moon. And when you look at what else is going on in the sky... Apart from having a, a random Mars in Aries, which is no laughing matter, there's not a lot going on during May, as I've mentioned in previous videos. But whilst looking at the chart for the new moon, I became aware that, wait a minute, Jupiter has just finished its conjunction with Uranus. It is now approaching sextile to Neptune, and by the end of this month, it's going to have moved into Gemini and be trining Pluto. So this is a six week period where you've got Jupiter making very nice aspects to all three of the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. This is rare. So I have to say, this is actually looking pretty good. Now, over the coming few weeks... Jupiter's going to hit everybody born at the end of Taurus in a very positive way. And this will have a knock-on effect into the lives of late Capricorns and late Virgos as well. And then it will move into Gemini, so it will really positively affect everyone born at the start of Gemini, start of Aquarius, start of Libra. So if you're one of these people, this next few weeks, there's opportunities around. Now, if you take them, you'll thrive and prosper. And if you don't take them, you lose nothing. But chances like this don't come about that often. Quite often, new moons, full moons, Jupiter transits, 
they're rarely this positive. If they are positive, there's normally a sting in the tail, and I'm struggling to find a sting in the tail on this one. Now, I do feel that this is so positive in so many individual charts, but it's almost inevitably going to have a knock-on effect into the world. Now, the world's in a pretty crazy space. A lot of people are really on edge, especially after April, and a lot of people are almost scared to relax. But I honestly don't see the big situations in the world getting any worse. This doesn't mean they're going to get better, but I don't think they're going to get any worse. I suspect that the more we get into my situations in, in the Middle East, situations in the, in the Crimea and Ukraine are going to get bogged down, stabilise, not be any more major changes, certainly not going to get any worse. Although, of course, that depends on your political point of view. So this new moon and the aftermath of it is actually quite positive. And like I say, I'm almost scared to say this. Nevertheless, it looks pretty good to me. So don't take risks. Do take chances. Because taking chances means making changes. And if you don't make changes, you get entropy, which leads to decay. And after all, a new moon, sun and moon together, it is the best possible aspect for a fresh start, a new beginning, planting seeds, launching, initiating. So if this new moon and or the influence of Jupiter over the coming weeks is affecting you in a positive way, then this is a great time to start something new, to initiate, to launch, to begin. How rare to be able to say something unconditionally positive. Catch you later, world. Bye.